Thank you for coming out to the Austin Writers Roulette. I'm about to give you guys a teacher look. Today's theme is Dog Days and Cat Nights, and the person who suggested it almost didn't show up, yeah. so I'm so happy he could make it. But we're not going to start with him. Um, we're actually going to start with a letter who's going to share her road trip adventure with a cat. Please welcome R.G. Hook. Hey. It is said that having a child changes your life. I say that traveling with a cat can alter your destination, perhaps even your destiny, <laughs> if you're not careful. Someone somewhere captured on video the worst 20 minutes of Gaditas in my life on the bustling westbound Interstate 15 that connects Las Vegas to Los Angeles in the year of our Lord 2016. This was the last portion of our around the country in a year road trip. Nine months prior, when I drove out of Austin, I learned that Gadita shut up if I let her roam freely throughout the Jeep, walking from window to window, her paws on the plastic armrests, her small feline face looking back and forth as each car passed. Children, sometimes even adults, would point and stare. Dog faces they were used to see. Kitty cats, not so much. Her continuous crying began two days earlier as we drove out of a cool Idaho and headed into the hot state of Nevada along dusty back roads, heat floating up from asphalt, waves of mirage creating vehicles and animals that did not exist. The only purpose for stopping in Las Vegas and sleeping in a room that smelled like three dirty hookers was that, <laughs> was that it was the only accommodation next to the highway that would allow a cat. The next morning, my 2001 Jeep refused to emit cold air out of the system. I rolled down the windows two inches so a cross breeze could keep us cooler as I blocked out Gadita's incessant crying and what the lack of a functioning air conditioner would mean as we drove across 200 miles of desert land, better known as the Mojave. And so it was just outside of Barstow, 60 miles <laughs> west of Las Vegas, when temperatures started to inch towards 100 degrees. It wasn't even 10 o'clock in the morning yet. We passed a white road sign with black blaring letters that read, $1,000 fine for abandoned animals on the highway. Who in the hell leaves a pet out here, I thought, as we passed an exit named ZZYZX. It was so scorching in this arid land that people gave up trying to use vowels in their town names. <laughs> <laughs> as the temperature outside went up a degree, I lowered the windows of the Jeep one more inch. I was not at all concerned that Gadita would see this as a primary escape route. She was too intent on sitting in the back of the Jeep, her mouth hanging open as she faced the driver behind us, panting as if to cool herself, but really, it was flat out dyspnea. No distressed, so distressed was she from our continued driving. Without warning, our 70 miles an hour slowed to 50, then 20, until finally we were rolling at a mere five miles an hour. Throughout the trip, I had stayed in the far right lane, designated for slow cars and trucks. The less speed, though, the less cross breeze, and a drip of sweat fell from my forehead. I rolled the windows down a little bit more. Because I had been successful blocking out Gadita's annoying Siamese cry, I did not take immediate notice when her whining stopped. It was purely by chance that I thought to glance in the rearview mirror. When I didn't see her, I turned my head towards my blind spot, no, Gadita, no! I yelled, but it was too late. Her body was already halfway out that narrow opening as she dragged her belly over the lip of the back seat window. Landing in between two lanes, she stood still, frightened into immobility. Had, been, had cars been going their normal 70 miles an hour, she would have been killed instantly. I maneuvered the Jeep onto the shoulder of the road and slammed on the brakes, opening the door before I even placed the gear into park. Jumping out, I placed both palms up as I faced drivers while mouthing the word <laughs> so I could grab her. But one car in a hurry to drive 10 miles an hour instead of 5 miles an hour ignored my plea and sped up in front of Gaidita, spooking her, causing her to dart across that final left lane and onto the dry, spindly shrubs of the median, almost four lengths 
working with. Gadita, come here, little kitty. Please, girl, please come here. I begged as I ran toward her, which caused her to run farther away from our side of the highway, already almost halfway across the median. Opposite us, drivers were headed east a normal 70 miles an hour. If I could not grab her before she made it to the other side, she would be struck by any number of cars. My idiocy only to blame. Trying to keep desperation out of my voice, I tried once more to coax her to stop, but this only made her quicken her stride, then turn abruptly and begin heading back to Las Vegas. Clearly, she had lost her kitty mind. <laughs> <laughs> if she had been close enough, I could have lunged for her pink collar, but she had managed to snap the thick safety nylon off in the Jeep so that if she ran away permanently now, there would be no identification around her neck. She was intent on hoofing it all the way back to Sodom and Gomorrah. If I tried to walk faster to catch up, even a little, she picked up speed. Although the air outside felt cooler, I knew this temperature was deceptive, famous for its ability to send a body into heat stroke, the lack of humidity detrimental. I began to wonder how long I could stay out here parched, this air untouched by ocean breezes or water of any kind. I had already stopped sweating, a bad sign for both of us. Maybe she'll wear herself out. And then I pictured us both, passed out on that brushy median. Nobody dumb enough to stop and help us. There would be no point. There was nothing and nowhere to go for 60 miles in either direction. And only barren land on both sides of the highways. Our carcasses found in some distant future, side by side, my bony arms still reaching for any part of her. And now I understood why the Department of Transportation for Nevada and California erected those signs, because I really did indeed intend to just leave her there. <laughs> <laughs> from, the, from the closer highway, a trucker beeped his horn, causing Gadita to jump and run back toward our original side of the highway. I smoothed my voice even more as I made non-stop licking, lip-smacking noises. Difficult for my saliva-free mouth. She was so close to the shoulder now, and even though the cars were still slow moving, they weren't stopped. She was scared enough to run directly in front of a rolling tire. I said with a final plea, Gadita, como estas, chica Gadita, que pasó? And that's what did it. Here in Spanish, because she was, after all, a Mexican cat. <laughs> I brought her back with me on the airplane after my Mexico sabbatical 10 years prior. When she heard her native tongue, she stopped on the shoulder, crouched into a tight position, miserable as her tiny paws rested on the hot asphalt. But it was enough time for me to catch up and reach down to grab her on the scrub as I whispered, okay, okay. She did not try to struggle against me as I gently picked her up, wrapped my arms around her. You're such a good kitty, I cooed while thinking, I'm going to kill this cat. <laughs> It's hot, I know, but we're almost there. Damn it, Gadita. Mm -hmm. The westbound lanes were still backed up, but not going as slowly as before, and impatient drivers were still hurrying to go nowhere. Yeah. Once she was in my arms, most cars slowed down in anticipation of me crossing the three lanes to get to the opposite shoulder where the Jeep was parked. But the semi-truck that I needed to cross in front of had a loud motor, causing Gadita's claws to dig into my arms. Her 12-pound body amassing a spastic strain of flailing nails that I was helpless against. The truck driver, noticing my struggle, silenced his engine, which calmed my girl, and I looked up to mouth. <laughs> Once inside the overheated Jeep again, I kept all the windows rolled up. As pissed as Gadika was with me, she did not leave my lap right away. Instead, she placed her mouth next to my ear, all the better for me to hear her cry. <laughs> Eventually, she strolled to the back of the Cherokee, facing the drivers behind us, her mouth open as she panted. There was little for me to do except hope the traffic started up quickly. We still had another hour of desert highway to cross, two hours until the temperature started to fall by 20 degrees. I opened the windows about an inch, trying to get out of that. <laughs> Within minutes, the flow of traffic accelerated to 25 miles, then 55, until we were going 70 again. I moved the windows down a second inch, welcoming in the crosswinds. Within moments, it was as if that bizarre 20 minutes on Interstate 15 never happened. By the time we reached LA, the Jeep's air conditioner began pushing out cold air again, while Gadita rested on my lap, 
purring as I gently rubbed her cheek. <laughs>